Welcome to our Monday Thursday service. Tonight is going to be a little bit unusual. First of all, we have no bulletin. And um, liturgy may not be what you are used to, but there is still the story is going to be told. And we are going to have to use our imaginations a little bit because I couldn't get uh, 12 men to come in here and lounge uh, around the table. So, um, you, you guys just put your foot down at that. And um, so, I, I will explain a little more when I introduce Miriam, who's going to walk us through this evening. But before I do that, I want to begin with the Word of God, which is very appropriate. And I'm going to be reading passages that Miriam is going to be using when she talks about Shalom. Welcome. Come in. Grab, grab a, a, a communion cup and, and um, the paper there, right here. There are more in the back if you need them. <laughs> okay, um, I'm, this changes a little something now. We, we, have, we have a child, <laughs> a children, two of them. Um, but uh, on this night, uh, we're going to be connecting the Passover with our Lord's Supper. And on the night of Passover, the youngest Jewish child in the room always got to ask, what is so special about this night? So guess who that is? <laughs> what is so special about this night? Can you say that later? Later when I, when I call on you? Okay, uh, I'll, I'll prompt you. I will also need a couple of people, um, maybe two or three, uh, when, I, when prompted to bring up the dishes and the candlesticks and the, the cup, 
from over here on the table and bring it to this one. We're going to be setting the table as I talk, and or as Miriam talks. And uh, then I, later I will need someone to bring up just the matzah and the, the bottle of saline water. And so uh, those, the matzah's lying on top of the matzah <coughs> box, so you'll know what that is. And the bottle of clear water looks like is saline water. Okay, so when I ask for that, two people, you know, jump up and, and come up here and, and get those and bring them to the table. And then uh, just before Jesus arrives, we're actually going to put the rest of the food out on, on the table. And um, so I'll need at least two, maybe three people who, you know, two of you could probably do it, but even three would be okay to bring that over and we will we'll set up, set the table at that point. Okay, so just a few directions so that when we, when we get there, uh, do I have volunteers for any of these? Okay, all right. Um, so who wants to do the dishes? Let's let's kind of. Okay, these two for dishes: uh, the the matzah and the water. All right, you two, and then uh, the rest of the food. Chris, anybody want to help Chris? She can do it. <laughs> okay, well, Chris and Jay. All right. So. Um, and, and if you forget or need help, I, I can prompt you as, as you go. So let's prepare our, our let's pray and, and pre prepare our hearts for the word of God. Gracious Lord, we come to you this evening and there's so much that's going on in our lives, but that this night, um, over 2,000 years, almost 2,000 years ago, there was a lot going on in yours too. Help us, Lord, to see and to understand with with uh, greater understanding and, and open our <coughs> eyes that we may, may see uh, the events of that night with fresh eyes and with fresh meaning and be moved closer to you. We ask that you would pour out your spirit upon me and upon this group that has gathered here tonight to hear your word and to give glory to you. And we ask that this is what be happening here tonight and with all praise and honor and glory, Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. The first passage comes from Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. From the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise. Because of your enemies, to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? You have made him a little lower than heavenly beings and crowned him with, a glory, with glory and honor. You have made him ruler over the works of your hands. You have put everything under his feet, all flocks and herds and beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the seas, all that swim the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. From of old, the Hebrews believed this was a messianic psalm, a psalm that predicted the, the coming of the Messiah. And we see these words that are familiar now in the New Testament. What may not be familiar is that uh, the opening of this, from the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise. And that because of your enemies, to silence the foe and the avenger. Listen for how that plays into the word of God in the New Testament. And then um, I'm going to skip over. The, uh, there's a fair amount to read, so I'm not going to read the, the two passages from Isaiah and um, Jeremiah, but you'll recognize them when, when Miriam says them. I'm sure you will. The other uh, passage that uh, bears attention is from Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, and it says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, 
on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And then from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, and I could be reading all evening from scripture, but these I felt were the, the key ones for understanding what, what's going to happen. Beginning uh, in verse 2, the evening meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. And Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. And after that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. And he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Jesus answered, I'm sorry, then, the, then, then Lord Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. And Jesus answered, a person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you, for he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. And when he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth. No servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, blessed are you, blessed will you will be if you do them. The word of God. Tonight we're going to take travel in time. We're going to go back to the first century when Jesus gathered in the upper room with his disciples and they celebrated the Passover meal together. And Jesus said, this is the last time I'm going to do this before I do it with you in the kingdom. And that was the night that the Lord's, our, what we know as the Lord's Supper or communion or the Eucharist, whatever name you give it, was instituted by Jesus Christ. The, Miriam is a servant in the house of uh, where Jesus and the disciples went that night. She's the head servant. She's the one in charge of getting the meal together and setting the table and making sure everything goes all right. And basically, you folks are going to are extra help that the, the owner of the house agreed to give her that night because of all the extra uh, people coming. And so she's going to walk you through it, and she's going to help you understand the things leading up to it, uh, what's happening, and at times, as, extra, as help and not guests, we can't be right in the room. So she's, in a sense, you're kind of like right there and sort of seeing but not seeing everything, so she's going to be explaining it to you. This is what's happening now, you know? And, and so um, that's why I'm asking some of you at, at the appropriate times bring up the things that, that uh, we need to set the table. This is going to be the table. We will, I will talk about Jesus instituting the Lord's Supper, the communion. That is not when we are going to take ours. So don't open your, <laughs> okay, don't open yours since you already have them. Don't open them. Uh, we will actually have a regular communion after uh, Miriam leaves, and there's special music. Okay, questions about what's going to, you know, how, 
and pray for me that I remember everything. And I had two hours sleep last night. I was really excited about this. Uh, so anyway, uh, so if everyone would, we're, oh, also we're going to turn these overhead lights out, and we're going to because back in the first century, I'm guessing they didn't have electricity, <laughs> and so we are. The backlights will stay on for exit and and bathrooms if you need them and whatever. But the candles. Uh, and there will eventually be candles up front. Uh, that's why I'm ha having candles tonight. Normally, on Monday, Thursday, a lot of times we don't use candles. But because uh, I'm trying to recreate a first century scene, uh, and I really don't think electricity is going to work. So, uh, so anyway, um, hopefully you can see enough. Um, once, I, once we get the candles on, I'll light them. I was going to do it later, but I think as dark as it's getting, I'll light the candles up front here right away, so it, it gives a little more light for you. Okay, so if you uh, wait just about 30 seconds, uh, and welcome Miriam when she gets back, and Jim and Jay, if you could take care of the podium while I'm finding Miriam, okay? <laughs> Good evening. I'm so glad you are here. I have just been running ragged trying to get all this food and, and everything set up. Jesus is coming. Have you heard? He's going to be here tonight and he wants to celebrate. He says he's so eager to celebrate Passover with us. And I'm just kind of thinking, what's going on? I mean, Passover is always a special night. The children always ask us every year. What's, what do the children ask? What's so special about tonight? What is so special about tonight? Well, I'm going to tell you about that in just a little bit. But Jesus is saying it's special. And I'm trying to imagine. Can you imagine why he thinks it's so special? What's different about this Passover that, that he has desired so strongly to have it with us? And we're going to get to be there. And we may not be right there in the front where the disciples are, reclining on those chairs. You know, reclining means that, that they're free. They're not slaves anymore. And that has plays into this whole theme of Passover. So anyway, before, before we get going anymore, could, could I have help bringing dishes to the table? rearrange them. Okay. The candlesticks too, please, and the goblet. Yeah, that works. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You may sit down. Thank you. This is great. It's getting dark, so I'm going to light these already.
the, the owner of the house's wife died. He's allowed me to pray over the, the Sabbath and the, the special holiday candles. So please join me as we pray. Gracious God, we ask your Holy Spirit to come upon us, to come upon me and upon this family, upon this household and all the households represented, that our children may grow up to be godly men and women following the Torah and all of the, the ways that you have ordained us to go. And we ask this blessing upon this household in Jesus' name. Oops. Not yet. <laughs> In the name of Adonai, amen. Well, what a whirlwind week this has been. Let me tell you, we have had, um, it started last Sunday with Jesus entering, and he was riding on a colt. And remember, Zechariah promised that the Messiah would come on a colt to Jerusalem. And, and he also, uh, the, the people were waving palms and putting their coats down on the road before him and, and shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And boy, the... Pharisees didn't like that one bit at all. I'll tell you, they went up to Jesus right away. They knew Psalm 8, and they prophesied that, that it prophesied that the, the children would praise the Messiah as he, as he entered, and, um, and they saw this as an anointing of Jesus as the Messiah, and they wanted it stopped because they would lose their authority and power and prestige if the real Messiah actually showed up. So they wanted Jesus to stop the children from praising him. Of course he didn't. And then, that wasn't all that they did. They were relentless at going after him all week long. They just kept looking for ways to trick him and trip him up by asking stupid questions. Like if a woman was married to seven different men and they all died, you know, and then she'd marry again, whose husband would she have and you know, whose wife would she be in, in heaven? Jesus took care of that real easy. But that wasn't all. They, they were trying to find ways to undermine his authority. They just don't like him. And so that, that, that was strange. I mean, this, was, this has been powerful, and there's this tug of war, Jesus of, and the, the Pharisees, but then that's not the only unusual thing. Jesus himself has been a little bit unusual this week. After he got into Jerusalem, one of the first things he did was went to the temple and he overthrew the tables of the money changers and said, my house is a house of prayer. My house. Who said that? God said that. And Jesus is saying, my house is a house of prayer. But you have made it a den of robbers. Wow. Jesus called on the prophets again. To tell them what they're doing isn't what pleases God. They didn't like it. And then um, he he had a he, Jesus has had it by this time. Usually he's so self-controlled and so gracious to people. Those Pharisees that have been trying to trick him and going after him relentlessly, he he just finally stood up to them and basically he cursed them and he said he called them uh, a brood of snakes and vipers full of wickedness blind guides whitewashed tombs hypocrites these are the people who were the ideal or the model religious people in the community and this is what Jesus thought of them he doesn't usually talk like that is really strange. And then, in addition to that, he's, he starts telling, he's just talking again and again about 
I'm going to die. I'm going to die, and I'm going to be buried. But don't be afraid, I'm going to be resurrected. Resurrection? What does do you know anybody who was resurrected? No. Well, the, the, I guess Lazarus sort of was. Maybe. But he's going to die again. And then there was that, that, that boy, that the widow's uh, son, that Jesus saw, and he resurrected him, or, or at least resuscitated him, brought him back. And that, was it Jairus' daughter? I don't know, but... But resurrection, where there's never any more death, ever? Who's ever heard of such a thing? Not I, that's for sure. And then, then um, he's talking about these parables. Everything's in parables. And especially this week, he's been talking in parables. He talked about the parable of the tenants, where, again, the tenants who were were farming the land killed every one of the messengers that the owner sent. And finally, they even killed his son. Death, again, more talk about death. And then he throws in there about the, the um, oh, what, what would that be? The, the wedding banquet. Where's that coming from? Boy, Jesus has just been all over the place this week. From death to wedding banquets. Um, oh, we need the matzah and the, 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 the saline water. Just the napkin. We don't need the whole box. Thank you. Do you want to pour that in? That goes in the bowl back there. Thank you. The matzah represents the bread on that first Passover night because our forefathers were told that they would have to leave quickly and they didn't have time to let the bread rise. And they were to bake bread without leaven. And so we continue on Passover observance to use unleavened bread or matzah. And Interestingly, there were always three pieces. Hmm. So have the matzah here. The saline water is reminiscent of the tears that were shed by the slaves, the Hebrew slaves in Egypt. And so we remember that pain and the, the turmoil and the the hurt of slavery in Egypt by having the saline water to dip things in. Now, where was I? Oh, yeah, Jesus. Jesus is going on, and he's, he's talking about, uh, more about death, <laughs> and he keeps coming back to that. He's talking about end times. He's talking about uh, how there's going to be deception everywhere in the end times. And he's talking about how there are going to be earthquakes and wild things happening in the earth. He even mentioned the moon turning to blood. How is that going to happen? I don't know. It's, it's just strange, all the stuff he's, he's been talking about. And then... Um, Then he, he comes back to another parable. And this parable is about the wise and ten, the, the, the ten wise and foolish virgins. And again, it's another wedding. Death to weddings, death to, weddings to death. Wise and foolish virgins. I don't know, this is above me. It's beyond me. I, I can't, can't make head or tail of this. So, you know, Jesus has really not quite been himself this week. And it certainly couldn't help that we had, uh, that the disciples had been fighting among each other. They're arguing over who is the greatest in the kingdom that's going to come when he sets up his kingdom. 
and one wants to sit on his right hand of power, and the other one wants to sit on his left hand of privilege. And they even got their mom involved in, in, in coming and asking for these positions for them. And it caused a great big stink among all of the disciples and the apostles, and they just, they're fighting. And so this is so untypical. And Jesus wants to come, and he's looking forward to having this celebration of Passover. And I'm just saying, oh, Lord, help us. I don't know what's going on here this week. It's all so strange. Well, they're going to be here soon, so we better get the food on the table. Those, um, the, uh, those of you who are in charge of the food, if you could help me uh, get this set up. Yeah, and, the, and the, you get the lamb chop. Oh, I'm, I'm going to need a, that spoon or. If you want to wait up here, and you can take some of these back over then. Just, you can just sit them on the table. I'll get it to them. Okay, we have a hard-boiled egg, and. Some people think that, that you know, this was representing the continuation of life in the egg. And it represents also one of our special uh, uh, sacrifices that we have to give. I am not good at pronouncing it, something like tigla. Okay, uh, if you talk to someone else and they tell you pronounce it differently, go with their pronunciation. <laughs> I'm not the best. So that had a special place in our Passover meal. And then we have bitter herbs and parsley and lettuce and then we also have lettuce is I don't think it's sour. Some people think it's bitter but I'm not a I don't think so, but this will be horseradish. Mm. If the lettuce doesn't get you, the horseradish will. Okay? <laughs> and the bitter herbs are to remind us of the bitterness mm -mm. of being a slave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we also have this concoction here, my own secret recipe. If you want to know the recipe, come up afterwards. I'll, I'll talk with you about it. This is, um, this was called caraset. And this was to help all the other stuff go down. Okay, this is a little bit sweet and tastes a little bit better. And, um, it is made to look like the mortar that was used between the bricks when we were slaves in Egypt and, and built all those pyramids and other buildings. And then finally, finally, the lamb, the lamb bone. On that first Passover night, if you remember that God told the Israelites sacrifice a perfect lamb and paint its blood on the lintel over your door. And when the angel of death passes through Egypt, he will see that blood and he will pass over and no one in your home will die. And so we celebrate that every year at Passover and remember the Passover sacrifice of the perfect lamb so that no one who believed in God and followed his instructions would die, but they would live. Okay. So let's see. Where? Oh, yeah. Uh, Jesus. Okay. Jesus is coming. He's right here. 
He, they're here. They're coming. We've got to stay out of the way. We can't get, get uh, too close to the table anymore. The men are, are seated around. I'm, I'm the one serving, so I'm, I can be in the room. Uh, I, I will share with you what I'm, what I'm seeing. And they're all reclining around the table, and they're, they're eating the, the other food that would also have been served, and just chatting and having a good time. And then it happened. Jesus broke protocol again. He got up, and he walked to this pitcher of water and a basin, and he took a <coughs> towel. First of all, he took off his outer clothes, stripped down to look like a slave, and then wrapped the towel around himself, poured the water in the basin, and went and started washing the disciples' feet. <laughs> well, that's special. You know, <laughs> we're trying to figure out what's so special about tonight. That's certainly special. And so here he, he did this. And Peter, he gets to Peter, and, you know, God bless Peter. Peter's always objecting to something or, or you know. Anyway, he's like, you'll never wash my feet, Jesus. And Jesus says to him, if I don't wash you, you have no part in me. And Peter's like, what? <laughs> say what? <laughs> and so what he did then was say, jump to the other extreme. You know, it's, we should call him extreme Peter. And, and then he wanted not just his feet to be washed, but his hands and his arms and his face. And Jesus says, no, no. If you've had a bath, you don't need to be bathed. You need just to have your feet washed. Now, there is a lot of thought about what that means. You can talk to me later if you, uh, if you want to um, about it. I'm, it's sort of speculation. Um, but he was just saying, you know, if I your Lord and Master can do this for you. This is how you should treat one another and do this for one another. I don't think he meant we literally have to wash up one another's feet, but we do have to check ourselves. Are we living humbly the way God intended us to live? And, you know, this whole thing came up. I bet they were arguing again as to who was greatest. That Jesus felt he had to get up and do such a dramatic thing as, as washing their feet to get them to see that, that those who are greatest among you must be your servant. And the first shall be last and the last shall be first. He's been telling them that, but it's not getting through. And now he, he went to the extreme of doing that. But that's not all. The next words out of his mouth is, but not all of you are, are clean. There's one of you who isn't, hasn't been washed by me. And you're going to betray me. Well, that set them all off. They all start saying, is it me? Is it me? Am I the one, Lord? And Judas eventually gets up and, and leaves. You know, this is this drama is just a little too much for me. I, I, I just wasn't prepared for this tonight. Then Jesus sits down and he says, takes the matzah and he picks it up and he blesses it and he says, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat it. And while they were chewing on that one, trying to think of what that meant, he then took the cup and he said, the mind boggling thing, this is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. This is a new covenant in my blood. All, all of God's main covenants are blood covenants. Did you ever know that? And now Jesus is saying, this is my blood establishing a new covenant for the forgiveness of your sins. What? What? 
And then he said, all the things that have been written about me in the law and the prophets are being fulfilled. They're all coming together and they're being fulfilled now. Oh my. I, I don't think I can, can take, understand what all that means. But they sing a hymn and they go out to the Mount of Olives. That's where, where Jesus always uh, went in the evening to pray. And so they got up and they went out and again, he starts, I got permission from the, the, the owner of the house that we could all go and follow Jesus at a distance. We could clean up later, okay? So we're all, we're going to follow him out to the Mount of Olives. And we see there that he's, he's talking and he's saying again, someone's going to betray me. I'm going to die, but I will be resurrected. And... Peter again says, they, well, they all say, we won't deny you. We won't run away. We will own you. We'll, we'll stand up for you and with you. Peter even says, if I have to die, I will not disown you. And Jesus looked at him, looks at him and says, Peter, by the time the cock crows two times tomorrow morning, you will have denied me three times. And then Jesus went on for quite a while, a lengthy sermon. And I looked at John. John and I are pretty close. And, and I looked at John, and I, I'm like catching John's eye, and, and he's like indicating he's going to write this all down so I don't have to worry about remembering it. But, but you can, he's up to about chapter 14 now in, in what he's writing about Jesus. So you, that's where you can read about what Jesus uh, said that night. But he talked about, I'm going away, and I'm going to prepare a place for you. And don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Believe in Jesus, the same as I believe in God. Hmm. And he says, I'm going to make a place for you, and then I'll come back. And if I go, you know, uh, he says, you know the way. And good old Thomas Doubting Thomas says, Lord, I don't know the way. We don't know where you're going. How are we supposed to know how to get there? And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Wow. And he goes on and he talks about how we'll do greater things than he ever did while he was here on earth. And, and he talks about the, the spirit of God. And it's better that he goes away because then the spirit can come and all the things the spirit's going to do. And about the vine and the branches and abiding. And, and it's like just too much for me to take in all at once. And then it was time to go to the Garden of Gethsemane for prayer. And we really have to stay back here. We can't, I'll slip up as far as I can, but what I'm seeing is Jesus is off by himself, and the disciples are sleeping. They're sleeping. Three times Jesus comes to them, and every time they've fallen asleep. I don't understand what, what's, this is a special night for sure. It's very unusual, but I don't understand. And then I see somebody coming in the dark, and, oh, it's Judas. Judas finally caught up to the group. Judas isn't alone. There's a group of men with him. And the closer they get, the more I see these are the enemies who have tried to stop him all along. And Judas is bringing them here to this most private place. And now Judas kisses him. And the, the, the guards, the temple guards, are arresting him. Not Jesus, not Jesus. Jesus is pure. He's good. He does the right thing. He says the right thing all the time. You might even say he's perfect. 
perfect, perfect Passover, the perfect lamb, the blood of the perfect lamb that was sacrificed and spread on the, above the doors so that death would pass over. Jesus, Jesus just said that his blood would be that new covenant, that his perfect sacrifice would provide the blood for those of us who believed, who, who've never had a chance of being free of sin. But if we believe him and follow him, his perfect blood, his, the perfect Lamb of God who sacrificed and his blood covers us and the angel of death will turn away. Turn away so that I am not going to be condemned when I get to heaven and face God. The perfect blood of God, the perfect lamb providing the perfect blood cover for all who believe. For the forgiveness of their sins. Oh, this is special. I have to go tell someone. Uh, get back where, uh, go home however you can. I've got to go tell my, my people and anybody I, who will listen. I've got to go. <laughs> on and see if that's going to be enough. If we put these on, it's going to be so bright after sitting in the dark. Two th almost 2,000 years later, we don't remember Passover, only in passing, <laughs> only that uh, it's connected somehow to Easter. But we do remember the Lord's table. 
and we continue to observe the Last Supper with the bread and the wine and all who are in love with Jesus or baptized in his name are welcome to participate in this with us. I think everybody here is a covenant member of, uh, of uh, New Hope, so I, I don't think there's too much question about that. But sometimes we, just like Jesus said, we have to wash, wash one another's feet. Sometimes we have to examine ourselves to be sure that we haven't slipped up and just kind of gotten lackadaisical about sin or forgiven our sin when we don't forgive others. We have our pet sins that, that we kind of excuse sometimes. So since we didn't have a prayer of confession before, take the paper that's before you. And let's begin with a prayer of confession as we move through this most holy time. Great and holy God, we come before you filled with wonder and awe of who you are and what you have done for us. We also admit we often want to be the greatest and have the place of honor rather than to serve. Too often we are like the Pharisees who wanted power, made their own rules, and sought the praise of people rather than your approval. We also confess that sometimes we, like Peter, deny you in order not to offend others or not to be rejected by them. Gracious God, thank you for sending Jesus. Remember your mercy and forgive us who are covered by Jesus' blood and righteousness. Amen. Let's continue in an attitude of prayer. Most Holy Father, I am afraid, but you said you would be with us. You said, let not your hearts be troubled. We believe in God, believe also in me. I do believe Jesus is your son. Thank you for providing the perfect lamb whose blood will cover us and cleanse us and make our sins white as snow and make us truly free. Lord Jesus, we thank you for coming and submitting yourself to the agony and the humility of being spit upon and beaten and put on a cross, shedding your blood and taking our sins upon yourself. Lord, we thank you. May we be eternally grateful at the grace that you have poured out upon us. May it guide all of our thinking and our saying and our doing that we would be your people. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us that we can live the lives that you have created us to live. The Holy Spirit is our teacher now and help us to listen and to learn let him instruct us in the scriptures in the way they are to be interpreted. To be uh, discerning that the deceptions in the, of the last days would not catch us, but that we would be set free, free to follow you, free to live without sin, free to worship you, to adore you, and to tell others about you. And Father, we ask all this in the name of your Son who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
can open your packets and get out the wafer. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. After supper, he took the cup and he blessed it and he said, This is the cup of the new covenant made in my blood, my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. As often as you do eat this bread and drink this cup, you remember the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us pray. Great and merciful God, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for sending Jesus, for Jesus, that you came willingly and that you submitted to, to all un -hor just horrible things that we just don't even like to talk about or think about. And forgive us when we draw back and try to preserve our dignity or our pride or our popularity help us to remember what you've done for us that we could not do for ourselves and to be filled always with gratitude and thanksgiving and praise and we ask all this in the name of Jesus amen and after they had done this, they sang a hymn, and they went out. Marie, if you would play um, Are You Able? Yeah. That's fine. anybody wants to come up and investigate the, the platter, feel free to do so afterwards.